Hi guys, Robert here from Irish Whiskey Auctions again. Um, today's video, we're going to cover an uh, interesting topic. We're going to cover Japanese whiskey. Um, the reason why we're covering Japanese whiskey is because we get more and more of it every month. And uh, one of our YouTube followers actually mentioned that we should do a video on it. That's why we're doing it. A uh, couple of recent changes in regards to Japanese whiskey that are also interesting. Uh, these are a selection of bottles we have in the auction for our May auction, which is live at the moment. Um, and we're going to talk through slight differences of what we have. Um, there's a little bit of malt, there's a little bit of grain, there's a little bit of something else. Um, and we're going to talk about why maybe you should look at collecting them, uh, how the recent changes are good for the Japanese whiskey industry, and hopefully more of what we see here on the table is to come. Uh, Japanese whiskey has been through a lot of demand over the last sort of, 10 or 12 years. Um, internationally, it's done really well. Uh, this has led to a significant shortage in the market globally for Japanese whiskey. Um, up until recently, Japanese whiskey didn't have as strict of a technical file as Irish whiskey or Scotch. Um, and the reason for that is that they never really needed it, I suppose, um, until a couple of decades ago, and then demand sort of just exploded overnight, and everybody wanted some kind of Japanese whiskey, and that led to um, I suppose safety for a lot of the sort of the Nikas and the stories of Japanese whiskey to look at what they can do to sort of manage this craze and because there was no real techno vial it also led to certain less desirable elements entering and doing stuff they maybe shouldn't have done but the good news is that it was all set to change so um, here for example this is actually a Japanese whiskey uh, which is made from rice however as of the 31st of March of 2024, this year, this can no longer be called Japanese whiskey because of their new stricter technical file that they now have in place. Uh, about 82 different Japanese distilleries have signed up to this technical file. Um, a lot of the major ones have already been sort of acting upon it. So your Nikas, your Centauris and everybody else have been actively using the technical file for the last couple of years so you're fairly safe with the bigger brands it's more so that the smaller sort of distilleries and new names that are coming up that you kind of have to do a little bit of homework on and um, so this for example nika coffee grain uh, this is a hundred percent japanese whiskey however its sister the nika um, coffee malt has elements of scotch whiskey blended into it and uh, the reason they do that it's because Nika and Centauri and a lot of the other bigger distilleries in Japan again have access to Scotch whiskey, have Irish whiskey, Cooley, Ben Nevis in Scotland as well as used, and they use these to sort of bulk out their blends uh, to sort of fight demand, I suppose, and also it gives them another access to sort of blend better whiskies. Um, Hibiki, this has been around since 1989. Uh, this was launched originally to celebrate a, a milestone in Japanese whiskey. Um, this is 100% whiskey from Japan. Um, Takashu 17, again 100% Irish whiskey from oh, Japanese whiskey from Japan. Uh, Nika, this one here, you can probably know, you'll recognize it. It's the Nika whiskey. Uh, if you zoom in here, you'll see this. And again, this is the same as this coffee, which is 100% Japanese whiskey. You'll see. Um, Produce both in-house and overseas. So that's actually a blend of uh, Japanese whiskey and most likely scotch even a little bit of Canadian whiskey sometimes is used uh, So the new technical file is in effect as of today um, And it basically there's very similar to scotch and Irish technical files in a way that it has to be matured in Japan for no less than three years it has to be distilled and manufactured at all stages in Japan. The water has to be sourced from Japan. And also, which goes a step further than the Scotch and the Irish technophiles, that has to be bottled in Japan as well, which is interesting. So everything now, to call something Japanese whiskey, the water has to come from Japan, it has to be distilled, matured, in wooden casks for a minimum of three years, and it has to be bottled in Japan as well, before you can call it Japanese whiskey. Um, the reason why they've done this is because over the years people have distilled wine or rice or wine whiskies and called it Japanese whiskey and a lot of people that were just trying to make a quick buck sort of did semi short term damage to Japanese whiskey internationally. Uh, prices are on the up again 
thankfully for a lot of Japanese whiskey, but for the last couple of years have suffered from this because of sort of this sort of lack of guidelines. So that's all of it really. Uh, these are all in the auction this month. Uh, you can bid on them. Uh, there is some good whiskies from Japan every single month that we have. These are a lot of the cheaper ones. So a lot of these bottles here, anywhere from sort of 50 euros all the way up to 200, 250 euros is kind of what you're gonna pay for the bottles here on the table. Uh, we do have more expensive ones. Uh, we have had some quite expensive uh, Japanese whiskies in, in the past and we will have more in the future as well. Uh, but yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, um, subscribe, comment and reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist you in any way. Thank you.